Stefano Vitale, you're the head of uh, Lisa Pathfinder Mission, as we say, the principal investigator of PI. So the first question is, why Lisa Pathfinder? Mm. Why Lisa Pathfinder? That's a good question. Well, you know, this gravitational wave move bodies uh, very far apart. They give very tiny push to bodies very far apart, and that's the way we plan to detect and observe them. And uh, if you ask how much force is needed to move the particles, uh, how much the equivalent force from a gravitational wave, well, you can think like that. If you have one of these masses in your end, which is two kilos, if you add a bacterium, that's the force of a gravitational wave. And there is no way you can test this and demonstrate that it's going to work in a, in a ground-based laboratory. The gravity of the Earth is too strong. And so uh, when we, in the early days, when we were going, when we were promoting the concept of flying a gravitational wave observatory, everybody says, this is a fantastic idea. It's beautiful technology, but how you prove it, All right? And so very soon, uh, it was clear that we had to go to into space to prove that uh, this technique of detecting gravitational wave may work. The technique is, as I said, is that you take two, two bodies, we take two small cubes of gold platinum, they are very shiny and nice to see. We put the five million kilometers away and they have to be so quiet that if uh, the ripple in space-time passes by, you see the motion and everything else can move your test masses and so to to try and see if, the, if all this is possible. We, we give away the five million kilometer, we put these two test masses in a satellite, and we look if we can make them so quiet, so still, one relative to the other, that we're going to see gravitational waves once we build LISA. So when did we get the idea? In the late 90s, uh, we proposed LISA to, to ESA, to the European Space Agency. And, um, and, and very soon we could see the resistance of flying something that is orders and orders of magnitude better than anything that has been done before. So in the late 90s, we started to conceive uh, um, uh, what was a, a sufficient test that would convince the agency that this is uh, this can work with no, no without too much risk and so we started in the late 90s we were very naive we weren't space people so it took some time to for us to understand how to do a mission like this and it took some years also for agencies and industry to understand what a mission like this is because it's brand new it's a lot of new uh, technologies, but I would say ideas, right? It's a lot of new ideas, a lot of new knowledge that you have to learn before you make some sen something sensible. Not everything worked out as planned. Actually, we had well, some suffering, but I would say we're now, <laughs> I would say now it was worth it. It was all worth it. Well, you know, uh, roughly a month and a half ago, uh, this baby, the satellite and this propulsion module, the little rocket that they used to send it in interplanetary orbit, was shipped from Europe to Kourou, to the spaceport we are in. Um, it, 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 I mean, that was risky, right? You, you take uh, 15 years of work, put in a truck, then put in an airplane, <laughs> and move elsewhere, but everything worked well. And so in the last year, in the last months, uh, what the team has done here is uh, uh, put the, the satellite on the rocket, I mean, built up the rocket, put the satellite in the rocket, and uh, this is the work which is still going on, and will go on till the fatidic night of the launch, which is coming soon. So the idea behind LISA Pathfinder is the following. Uh, you take two test masses, call them one and two, and put them within a satellite. And what you want to do is to measure the distance between the two satellites. 
uh, you need to put them within a satellite because if they're in floating in space, you would have an influence of the solar pressure, for example, that would push these masses, and uh, these this solar pressure would not be uh, would not correspond to gravitational forces. So, if there is solar pressure, this acts on the uh, satellite, which acts as a shield, and this will modify the distance between the satellite and test mass one. And when this difference, uh, the position is uh, modified, then we act on microthrusters in order to put back the satellite in a proper position so that test mass one is centered in its housing. Once this is done, then we can proceed with a measurement of distance D12, and this has to be kept to within a precision of the order of one picometer, and this is what Lisa Pathfinder wants to measure. Once all the equipment have been integrated within the satellite, a final step is to test that the satellite is behaving correctly and that the performance is at the level expected by all the scientists and engineers. The first test is to check that all the equipment have the adequate temperature for a proper function. Actually, in space, the temperature is not, not cold or, or, or hot. It is a subtle equilibrium between the different heat sources that are in space, namely the sun, the earth, the dark sky, and the heat generated by the satellite itself. In order to test that under this condition, the different equipment have the proper temperature, the satellite is put in a big vacuum chamber, vacuum, vacuum thermal chamber, uh, where it is possible to lit the satellite with an artificial sun. With this equipment, it is possible to check that all the equipments will have the proper uh, temperature and that they will function correctly in space. Once this test has been done and completed successfully, the next step is to put the whole satellite on a vibrating point. This test will check that the satellite will withstand the very strong vibration and accelerations that uh, will occur during the launch of the satellite. This test is very impressive, very spectacular, and sometimes can lead to the destruction of the satellite if it was not uh, properly designed and constructed. Once all these tests have been performed successfully, then the satellite is ready for launch, and uh, for Lisa Pathfinder, that uh, moment we are all expecting, and that should occur within a few months. As for all science space missions, data analysis is a crucial point in the mission. It's particularly important in Lisa Pathfinder and ELISA because we want to achieve a very high level of precision. The Lisa Pathfinder spacecraft will be located in the Lagrange L1 point at 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth. And the data are emitted every day during five hours at a rate of seven uh, kilobytes per second. To give an idea, this rate corresponds to downloading a full movie during one week without stop. The data are received by the antenna of the ESA networks and then sent to the uh, ESOC, the ESA, uh, European Space Operational Center in Darmstadt that will be that will distribute the data to the other data processing center as the Francois Arago Center in Paris. And both ESOC and Francois Arago Center will analyze the data. The goal of this analysis is to measure uh, with which precision we can, uh, we succeed to leave a mass, proof mass in free fall in space. And the other goal of this uh, data analysis is to measure the parameter of the system and to measure as much as possible parameter to understand how it behaves and to be able to transfer this technology to the ELISA mission. To be ready for the anal data analysis, we are doing science several uh, years, each uh, three months, seri a series of exercises where we are simulating the data with simulator as that simulate data as close as possible to the real data, and we are testing our data analysis procedure on it.
The LISA Pathfinder mission is going to be launched by a Vega rocket. This new type of launcher from the European Space Agency has been designed for small payload. By small, I'm talking about two tons of scientific instrument that can be put in a low Earth orbit. As a comparison, the Ariane 5 launcher has a capacity of 20 tons. So we want to bring our satellite that has the weight of a small truck to the L1 Lagrangian point at 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. Two questions. What is the Lagrangian point and how do we get there? Lagrangian points are five gravitational equilibrium place, places between two massive objects that we usually call L1 to 5. In our case, we're talking about the Earth-Sun system and the L1 point is located on a line between them. It has two advantages for us. A fixed distance between the Earth and Sun, so we get an almost constant illumination on the solar panel and it is a relatively calm gravitational zone, especially in terms of tidal effects. The equilibrium around this point is unstable, but by using small trajectory correction, we can maintain our satellite in this post during the whole mission. Of course, you cannot reach 1.5 million kilometers distance from Earth in one shot. The cost in energy would be too important. So first, Vega will place the spacecraft in an elliptical orbit around Earth at distances between 200 and 1600 kilometers. Then successive pushes by the spectral propulsion system will increase the size of the elliptical orbit and its speed. When it reaches a sufficiently high speed, a last push will bring the spacecraft to our L1 point. The propulsion system will, separate from the, will be separated from the scientific instrument and the science program will begin. So the liftoff is scheduled for October 2015 and we're all waiting for that moment. What are your feelings as a PI uh, a few days, a few hours before launch now? So how does it feel? <laughs> Tense, <laughs> right? It's, uh, we, we are risking 15 years of work in one night. Uh, and the future mission. Yeah, in the future mission. So this is a very critical moment, but I think if mankind doesn't take risk, uh, we're not going to get anywhere, right? So, and we have, each of us has to take his own part of risk. He must manage risk very carefully, do his best, but if we don't do a risky thing, we don't open new fields and new knowledge for mankind. So I think we did our best. Let's see how it works.